Hello, today we're going to make a very American dessert called the s'more. Now, if you don't know what a s'more is, it's a graham cracker sandwich with chocolate and marshmallow in the middle. And you're probably used to eating this with a campfire or some type of fire, but there are gonna be so many ways I'm gonna show you how we can enjoy it. And if you stick around, I'm gonna show you how to make your own vegan marshmallows. Okay, first let's go over the ingredients that you're gonna need. Graham crackers, I like these ones because they're already broken out into squares instead of rectangles. Chocolate, I also like these because they're already broken into squares. Or any other chocolate you like, I like this one too. Marshmallows, Biscoff cookies. Now if you wanna make your own marshmallows, you'll need powdered sugar, cornstarch, a can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans, cream of tartar, agar agar powder, which is an algae-based vegan substitute for gelatin. If you've never heard of agar agar powder, it's usually found at an Asian grocery store, or as I call it, just a store. Syrup, you can use corn syrup, or you can use maple syrup. Caster sugar, some vanilla. For the equipment, a stand mixer, a medium saucepan with a whisk, temperature thermometers, an eight by eight dish, a rubber spatula if you have one, and my favorite, a torch. Okay, let's start by making some vegan marshmallows. Hey, and if you don't wanna make your own marshmallows, that's totally cool. Just fast forward to the part where we put this more together. But if you wanna make your own marshmallows, let's do it. Let's be extra. Okay, first what we're gonna need, we're gonna need our can of chickpeas. I need about half a cup of the water from here. This is called aquafaba water. Okay, and this aquafaba water, because we're making this vegan, this is basically our substitute for any types of eggs or egg whites. So I'm gonna take half a cup of this and pour it into my stand mixer. Next, I need half a teaspoon of cream of tartare. What this helps does, it helps bind it. This is gonna make it more like a meringue. Okay, and just like when using egg whites, what we're gonna do is we're going to put on our low setting first, let it go, and then gradually build it up until we're going super fast and we're gonna get air into it and make some fluffy peaks. We're gonna let this run for about four minutes. You see those bubbles? We want air into this mixture. That's done. You see how it sticks? That's what we're looking for. All right, so what we want is we want this consistency where it's super fluffy and we can see that it still sticks to the whisk. It's not falling off. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we're gonna set that to the side. Next thing we're gonna work on is our vegan gelatin. And what we're gonna need, we're gonna need our saucepan, a whisk. For the ingredients, you're gonna need a cup of water, three teaspoons of agar agar powder, one and a fourth cup of syrup. This kind of holds a lot of things together. You can totally use corn syrup if you want, but if you want to do an extra boost, maple syrup is really good too. And a cup and a half of caster sugar. All right, let's get moving. We have to be very, very cautious about our temperature control. So I'm setting my thermometer to about 240 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. That's probably 18 kilograms. I don't know the metric system. I'm American and I need to bring about a cup of water to a boil. Okay, so we're gonna wait for this to come to a boil. When it gets to a boil, then we're gonna add our agar agar powder, and that's gonna cause it to form this gelatin. Then we're going to add our syrup and our sugar to sweeten it up and to also make this kind of syrupy structure that we're then gonna to add to our marshmallow structure. All right, that's coming to a boil. Let's add that agar agar powder, and I'm keeping track of the temperature that I needed to go to. Okay, we passed the 200 mark. Let's add the other stuff. Cool, now I'm gonna add my syrup. So now I'm trying to bring it back up to a boil because that's what's gonna activate this agar agar again to make it a gelatin. All right, that looks good. Okay, I can turn the heat down a little bit. It's like watching a void. Okay, we want to do this part a little bit slowly, so I'm not going to just dump it all in. I'm going to put it back into a liquid measuring cup and slowly pour it back in. I'm going to add in a fourth teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of vanilla. Okay, now I'm going to turn it up for about 10 minutes. While that's going, let's get to the next part. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to make a little layer of cornstarch and powdered sugar because we're gonna put that into our eight by eight dish, then pour the marshmallow mixture in, 
That way it doesn't stick. Get a container like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put half a cup of cornstarch and a full cup of powdered sugar. And honestly, it's just easier to shake it. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dust our eight by eight dish with the powdered sugar corn flour mixture. And we need to spray down first. So I like to use a neutral oil like avocado oil or you can use grapeseed oil, whatever you want. We're just gonna kind of coat this in here, okay? Coat it down. Now, if you have a sifter, that's gonna be the best. If you don't, it's totally fine. I like to take a spoon, put in my sifter, and we're just gonna dust. And you wanna get like everywhere. I'm gonna save some for the top. Let's put it together. Smoothing it out. We're gonna cover it, let it sit for an hour to six hours. If you can put it overnight, even better. Okay. Okay, let's get to work. Let's make some s'mores now that we have our marshmallows. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can see pros and cons. The very basic easy way, I'm gonna take my graham crackers, I'm gonna turn them upside down. And if you didn't wanna make your own marshmallows, that's completely fine. I'm gonna show you a couple different methods. So this is the method most people use. We're gonna get a little blowtorch, and you don't wanna put it directly in because you're gonna cook the outside and not the inside. So we're gonna go a little further out. And if it catches, I like it a little toasted. We usually get that, right? And the problem is that it's so cooked on the outside, but the inside is still not as, not as toasty, but some people like that method. Yep, the outside is crusty, but the inside is still, still too chewy. It's still, it's not, it's not fluffy enough. This is okay, let me show you some other methods. All right, the one that I like is honestly just using the microwave. I'm gonna take a marshmallow, put it right there. For chocolate, you could use whatever chocolate you like. I really like these Ghirardelli squares because they're, they're easy. Just like the graham crackers that are already squares, these are squares. Plop it down like so. Okay, the magic number we're gonna use is 10 seconds in the microwave. That's it. See getting bigger? Ugh. All right. Okay, so after 10 seconds in the microwave, the marshmallow expands and then comes right back down. The chocolate is nice and melted. I'm gonna take a little butter knife and I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit. And now we add fire. And now we just make them a sandwich. Like that. Beautiful push down. All right, so that's our first method. Microwave with a store-bought marshmallow. Okay, well, what about our own marshmallows that we made? So we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to take my graham crackers, turn them upside down. Now, with the uh, marshmallows that we made, they're not gonna have as much structure, so you're gonna see when we microwave them again, they're kind of gonna go a little bit all over, so we don't need as long as we did with the store-bought marshmallows. So here I have a very small sliver of a marshmallow. That's gonna be enough. It's honestly gonna be quite a bit. I'm gonna take a chocolate square, put it down. We're gonna need like eight seconds for this one. Yes, through a lot of experimentation, you do not need a lot of marshmallow, just a little bit. I'm gonna take my torch, torch it up. Let's sandwich it together. And there is our homemade one. And now we could do some other cool tricks. So one that I have learned to make, I like these Biscoff cookies. I'm gonna take two, put them down. Here, I'm gonna take a very small sliver again of my marshmallow that we made. Let's put it this way. Cool. I'm gonna take a little bit different chocolate. I have two of these little pieces right here. That looks good. All right, microwave again, eight seconds. Chakaras. Nice. 
one more surprise for you. Okay, check this out. If you have some strawberries, we're gonna do a trick. I'm gonna take these strawberries right here and we're gonna melt some chocolate. We're going to melt some of the marshmallow, dip them together, and then roll it in graham cracker crumbs. Let's do it. So to do this, just take some graham crackers that you have and we're gonna just put it in a blender. All right, cool. We just put it on a plate. Next one, we're going to take our chocolate. We're gonna just microwave it, melt it down. You could do a double boil if you know what a double boil is. I'm not gonna deal with that right now. I don't want to, we're just gonna microwave it and then we're going to dip our strawberries in there. Okay, I have some chocolate right here. I'm just gonna microwave it for about a minute and stir it and see how it goes. Okay, that looks good. Oh yeah, that's good consistency. One more marshmallow time. Let's make some fluff. Fluff is a more liquidy version of marshmallows. All right, this last one's super easy. I'm just gonna take some more of that marshmallow that we made. I'm not gonna put a lot because when we microwave, it's gonna expand and come back down. About 10 seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. That's what I want. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. So I'm gonna take my strawberry, pierce it, cool. First roll it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Looks great. Then I'm gonna dip it in the chocolate. We're going to roll it in the graham crackers. With a toothpick in it. And there we go. There you go, there we have it. We did it. We used marshmallows that we can buy from the store. We had our own marshmallows. We did a little variation using Biscoff cookies and then ultimately a strawberry dipped s'more instead. Let's give it a shot and let's see how we feel. Good bite to it. Let's try the ones that we made using our own marshmallows. Much softer, much softer than the store-bought one. Not as gooey and stringy as the store-bought one. This guy. Mmm, that cookie is good. It's like a gingerbread -y taste. The last one, our strawberry s'more. That one's so unique because the juice from the strawberry doesn't make your mouth feeling so, so sticky. Several types of s'mores. I hope you enjoy. Give it a shot. Let me know. It's a really fun family activity. Be careful of the fire.